Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Stan and in this video, I want to talk about the brand new mini ITX motherboard from ASUS, the Strix i uh, Z590 motherboard that I've got right here. So let's get into it. So what is this motherboard? Well, basically this is ASUS's Z590 version of the Strix i or mini ITX motherboard. Uh, it's actually very similar in design and concept as the previous generation Z490 version. And if you're familiar with that, uh, it's basically the same thing with LGA 1200 compatibility, meaning 11th gen and 10th gen compatible CPUs. Only this version has a few, few little tweaks as well as PCIe 4.0 compatibility. So this is really meant or designed with the Rocket Lake CPU that's coming out later this month in mind. So as you can see here, the design language of this motherboard is very consistent with what we've seen previously with the Strix i motherboard series, as well as ASUS's AMD ITX motherboards. Uh, it is completely black with uh, two dim slots with either a riser board for M.2 SSDs and a full suite of IO on the back. Now, before we get into the motherboard, let's just first talk about the additional accessories that you get. So you get a certificate saying that this is an ROG motherboard. You get some stickers uh, from inside the box. And then you've got a CD for drivers. Um, you don't get the USB drivers. You only get a CD, which is kind of disappointing, but whatever. Um, a user manual and a bunch of additional hardware accessories. So you've got four SATA cables, which coincide with the four slots on the motherboard. Also, you get a, this is the front panel connector to, that extends the little pins so that it's easier to connect the front panel. You also get a magnetic antenna, which screws into the back of the motherboard. This is magnetic, so you can stick it on your case if your case is uh, metal, and you can you know, change that direction to however makes sense for you. Uh, you get some zip ties, some M.2 screws, and this right here, this is kind of interesting. This is, I wanna say this is a USB header with two outlets, so Seeing as there's only one USB 3.0 header, internal header, this is probably what this is for, to give you two outlets. And then a uh, key ring if this is, or lanyard if this is your thing, this is an ROG lanyard. So you got some ROG little bits as well as uh, useful hardware or useful, I guess you would call it hardware. So that's kind of what the accessories look like. Now, with that aside here, let's take a closer look at this motherboard and I'll bring you a little closer so you get a better look. All right, so as you can see, all black, which is very, very nice. Um, let's start at the very top of this motherboard. So at the very top here, you've got a single eight pin EPS connector and this is the metal shielded version with uh, solid pins, so that's nice. Uh, being a mini ITX motherboard, you don't have the additional connector, so only a single 8-pin right here. And then along the top, you've got a uh, first-generation RGB header, a couple fans. This is going to be an AIO fan and a regular CPU fan header. And then that brings you to the side here. Along the right side, you got the 24-pin, and then you've got um, a front panel connector and then a USB 3.2 Gen 2 connector, and then this has gotta be a USB 3.0 header right here. Below that, you've got four SATA connectors. Um, I guess if you're still running SATA, then this will be useful, but if you're running mini ITX, I imagine that you're gonna be running uh, M.2 SSDs, which this system can take two of in this little riser board right here. So you got, um, on top, kind of like a heat sink. This is, this is, I wanna say this is metal while this is plastic. So you got uh, LEDs in here, which kind of glow RGB, which is kind of nice. And then you got a little bit of metal and sandwich in between here, you can see. Sandwich in between, we've got a, a slot for M.2 on top and bottom. And we'll disassemble that so we can take another look in a little bit. Below that, we've got a internal USB header here and then another fan chassis fan header with 
a second gen RGB uh, header with, uh, and then I want to say if this is a front audio connector. Um, so a lot of the connection, additional connections are actually on the little riser board here. So that's kind of interesting. Aside from that, we have, if I recall, I think you do have debug LEDs here somewhere. Yes, you do. Uh, debug LEDs is buried in here and um, you know, that's kind of nice to be able to see where, where you are in the boot process. There is no OLED display or there's no code display seeing as this is a mini ITX board and the back here, back of this motherboard actually doesn't have any of that either. So, however, uh, that's not to say that there, this IO is undesirable because in fact, in my opinion, this motherboard has quite a lot of good IO connections in the back. And let me just peel this off while I'm at it. Uh, what you'll find is this IO is actually very complete and it's basically got one of everything because you can see here, you've got a couple of USB 2.0 connections. I wanna see, yeah, they're probably, wait. Yeah, they're, they're 2.0 connections. You got a HDMI out which is uh, if you're gonna be running an internal graphics card, or sorry, internal integrated graphics, then you're gonna be using that. Uh, USB flashback, BIOS flashback, very useful, uh, which is coinciding with this right here. Additionally, you do have a uh, 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C connection, so this is full 20 gigabits per second, so that's pretty quick. And then you have a single USB Type-A 10 gigabit, connection, which is, um, you know, pretty good as well. Now, seeing as you've got basically one of each connection, as I said here, uh, US one USB 3.0 connection, and then you've got a Thunderbolt 4 connection. This is actually uh, pretty interesting because, so you can use all sorts of Thunderbolt connections or USB 4 connections. Uh, this is gonna be your universal port up to 40 gigabits per second. So this is really, really good. Um, what you have is one single 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection. This does not have 10 gigabit ethernet. If you want or need 10 gigabit ethernet, you're gonna have to use an adapter. USB 4 Thunderbolt 3 outlet, which is probably what I'm gonna be doing because 10 gigabit ethernet is pretty important to me. Additionally, you have two uh, antenna connections for uh, Wi-Fi 6E. 6E being the newer generation, newer generation than six. It's gonna be, I think it actually ups the speed, but don't quote me on that. Uh, below that, you've got three connections for audio and these connections will light up per the appropriate color for the audio connection. So, um, all in all, this is basically very similar to the our Z490 mother Strix i motherboard. Again, the main difference is that you have the USB 4 uh, Thunderbolt 3 connection in the back. Uh, the other main difference is the um, PCIe 4.0 connection that you get here. And while I'm at it, let me just go ahead and disassemble that for you to take a closer look. All right, check this out. This is actually kind of interesting because this right here, this is basically a chunk of metal. And you can see here, we got a heat thermal pad on the back here. Additionally, because it's RGB and it needs connections, you've got some connects, oops, sorry, you can't see, actually see here. You got some connections here uh, that pin go through here to the board below. Um, and you got, when you're removing it, you actually have to lift from this side and then slide it out to make sure that you don't damage the connection pins here. So if I put that down, here's the other observation for this motherboard is that you've got this ribbon cable connecting this side to the motherboard. So probably this lifts up some way. Okay, there you go. It pops right off. And if you want to install that secondary uh, M.2, it's, you, know, you would remove these two and you would slip that right in on the underside here, you can see. There you go. 
The top M.2 is the PCIe 4.0 uh, times four lane up here, while the bottom side is the PCIe 3.0 uh, X4 lane. So if you have a M.2 SSD that is PCIe 4.0 enabled, such as a 980 Pro, that's gonna go right up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that while we're at it. Now this M.2 SSD is like only got chips on the top side, so uh, the thermal pad on the bottom is really not doing much. It's only on the top side, which is actually gonna be connected to that block of aluminum, so that's good. Oh, I actually missed it before because You've got a connection here, and this is probably for the top connector, while you've got another connection here that actually slots into here, and that's gotta be the bottom M.2 connector. And there you go. So again, what we did was we installed the M.2 SSD up here and left the bottom one blank. Uh, if I were to install one in the future, that's where it would go. And we've slotted in the connections in the two places. So it's ready to go. Lastly, what, just to show you guys what the motherboard will look like with the memory installed here, you can see if I open this up, get slot in my two sticks of memory. I'll check that out. So look at that, all black. Looks really good, doesn't it? One last thing I wanna show you guys is this right here. It is a plate on the IO. Do have a little fan on the inside here and this fan is basically blowing down on uh, this chunk of aluminum. And this is, this is all aluminum right here. This whole thing is aluminum. You've got a big chunk of aluminum and you've got a heat pipe that runs from here into here. So. You do have some active cooling. The air, I think, either comes out the very, very bottom in here, and you've got some um, intakes up here. Uh, air does not come out the back, so it's kind of just dissipated under here all around. I bet you there's some channels here that probably flows over the M.2 memory, so air goes in and out. Uh, in my experience, I have not been able to test this. I don't have the CPU yet, but in my experience, most ASUS motherboards fans are relatively quiet, if not not running at all. Uh, and it only powers up when you need it to. Uh, and that's probably what is gonna be happening in this case as well. And then you can probably control the speed and the fan speed in the BIOS, but uh, it's just something to be aware of that there is an active fan in this Mini ITX motherboard. Last thing I wanna point out is that the back of the motherboard is pretty standard. Uh, there are a lot of components on the back, as you can see here, but there is no M.2 slot because, again, your M.2 slot is on the front and you've got two already here, so you don't have a third one unlike the, uh, the ROG Impact, uh, Crosshair Impact, the uh, AMD version of this, actually no, the AMD version of the higher end board, uh, which has the M.2 on the back as well for the third one. But uh, two M.2s is plenty, in my opinion, for this kind of motherboard. And it's really um, basically everything you need because this is, this is gonna be one beefy motherboard in a little teeny tiny compact package. Anyway, hopefully you guys learned what you wanted to know about this little motherboard. Uh, I think this is gonna be a very nice little motherboard, especially if you're planning on building a Z590 Mini ITX system. Um, there are a handful of other Mini ITX motherboards out there, but again, um, seeing as it's so feature rich on the back IO and the design is pretty cool, um, you know, you should definitely check it out if you're in the market. I'll make sure to link everything in the description down below. And if you found this useful, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see the rest of this build, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.